Hey everybody, this is John, and welcome back to Jay Wood Fly Fishing on YouTube. If you are watching this and haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so now. I'm going to be doing a lot more uh, videos over the next few weeks, and I think you'll want to see a few of them, if not all of them. Anyway, today I'm going to do for you a uh, crab pattern that it's a modification of a pattern that I picked up in Texas while fishing with a guide down there in Rockport. And I've done a couple of things to simplify the tying just to make it that much quicker. So let's get started. I'm doing this today in olive. And I do this in several colors. The tan that you saw there in the beginning, the olive, um, one called back country which is the color that Enrico Puglisi named that uh, brush that we're going to use. Now I'm going to start with a uh, Umqua X-Series 420 hook. This is a 5X nickel plated hook. It is a very super sharp hook and uh, it's extremely durable so the second thing i'm going to do here we got your olive six aught uni thread and i like to use the six aught as opposed to a heavier thread just so i can control the amount of bulk that i build up with the thread now i'm going to start the thread on there you see i've got a little thread base and i'm going to come back to about one hook eye length behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to turn the hook to where I'm looking straight down on it so that I can see where I'm at. And what I'm doing here is I'm building a bump of thread and that's going to kind of be the base and the stop for the eyes which are 532nd or 4 millimeter black or black nickel brass dumbbell eyes and I'm wrapping those right up against that thread bump and what that thread bump does the size that I built it which you could see it was pretty big is it makes it easier to lock those eyes down so you don't have to spend as much time figure eighting them on there now I'm gonna run back to the bend of the hook and then run right back up behind the eyes and drop back a little bit. You can see I'm about a quarter inch behind the back of the widest part of the eyes. And the tail on this is a piece of variegated olive rabbit zonker strip. And I've cut it so that it's one inch long along the leather side of the strip and then you can also see I tapered the tail just a little bit now I'm going to come in here and take about a quarter maybe a little bit more a quarter of an inch of the fur off of that towards the square end which would be the front end of that strip and the reason I'm doing that is twofold number one it helps it hold on the hook a little bit better if you leave that hair on there, it tends to want to slide if a fish grabs it and pulls on it. By cutting that hair off, it uh, does away with that. Number two, I want to cut down on the amount of bulk right at the end of the tie-in point. If I leave that on there, that makes this real bushy right here, and it's a little more difficult to, to work with. So I'm going to come about a quarter inch back up the shank towards the eyes and stop my thread there and then I'm going to get four to five strands of olive pearl crystal flash and I'm going to double them in half so the ends are even and then cut the loop in. Now I'm going to determine the length on these is about three and a half 
So I'm going to find the center of that, which is about one and three quarters. And I'm going to tie that in on top of the hook shank right there in the middle. And then as I wrap back towards the back of the tie-in point on the tail, pull that downward. You'll be able to see it better here on the front side when I do it. Lock that down. And I want that pointing downward at this point because when the fly is done and it's sitting like this, those are going to be pointing upward. And it's just going to be a little more visible for the fish. And that stuff's going to move in any current you've got. And I want to leave those just a little bit shorter than the full length of the tail. If they end up being a little bit longer than that, I'm going to trim them off. Now the body on this fly is a Enrico Puglisi. It's called the EP Crustaceous Brush. And this is a two inch across. And this color here is considered olive. It's just got olive and some rusty orange, black, green. And then it goes back to the olive. The, anyway, it gives it a really variegated color. So it's not just a bland, single color in the water. Now I'm going to tie that down right there at the back. And you'll notice right here is the end of the wire. While I'm wrapping my thread, I want to avoid that because when you hit that, if you hit that with your thread, most times it's going to cut it. The, the end of that stainless steel wire, when you cut it with your... Uh, wire cutter is super sharp. Now I'm going to use two color of legs on here and these are Wapsie Silly Legs. This one is olive with orange tips and I want two of those. So I'm going to cut them off like that. And I've left the ends on there because they're easier to handle. And then the other set of legs are just olive with a black flake. And again, I'm going to cut right here, if I can get my scissors in there. It's a little tougher to do from that angle than normal. Cut that, and see I'm leaving the end on there for ease of handling. And then I'm going to do that on the other end, just... Cut that loose. Now I've got two pairs of legs here. And I'm going to grab them by the ends and then wrap them around the thread and pull them right up on top. And that gets those legs right in the middle. Now if you'll notice I've got them positioned about the center of the hook shank from the end of the shank to behind the eye and that's going to be the center of our fly when we're done so i've got about three wraps of thread around there holding them in place now i'm going to wrap them like i was doing say a uh, uh, wing on a spinner so that the legs are outside i know it's hard to see that right there there we go get my big mud out of the way there we go and now I've got that wrapped on there. And I'm going to take my thread, bring it right up behind the eye of the hook. Now I want to take the legs on the far side and pull them over the eye of the hook and just drop my thread over it once. I'm just getting those out of the way so when we wrap this brush, I'm not having to wrestle those also. And I'm going to take a second wrap around that set of legs that was on my side of the hook just to make sure that they don't come unwrapped. So now I'm going to make three wraps around the hook shank. And these three wraps are all going to be behind the legs which are in the center of the fly. That's two. 
and the third one is going to be butting right up against the legs and that's kind of important because we're going to use that to help hold everything in place to help hold the legs in place and I might note when you're wrapping these things keep that brush really really tight because we're going to trim it later on and you want it to stay in place once it's trimmed so I release the set of legs that are on my side and I'm just going to kind of fold them back and as I come around I'm pulling them onto the side I'll rotate that so you can see it and as I bring that around the brush around it's going to lock that in place so that they're going to come right out the side of the fly that's where I want them to end up and then I'm going to do the same thing you notice when I roll that over to show you that those other set of legs released and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to rotate it so I can see what's going on here pull those legs straight back along the side I don't want to let that brush pull them around because I want the legs coming out of the bottom of the fly when we're done so I've got one wrap holding them in place and you can see that gap I'm going to make one more wrap behind the eyes right up against the eyes and then on what is the bottom right now but it'll be the top after we get it all trimmed up I'm going to flip that brush in front of the eyes and make two more wraps and on that second wrap I'm going to come around and I've got my handy dandy brush here I'm going to part all those fibers right there and once I get the part I'm just going to take one more wrap right there and then bring my thread over once really tight you can see how much pressure I'm putting on it bending that hook make a second wrap right there and then make several wraps in front of the brush right behind the eye of the hook now I've got my nippers these are uh, jewelry making nippers that you can get at any craft store get those scissors out of the way nip that just as close as I can to the shank of the hook pull out any really loose fibers now that wire being really sharp we've got the same thing going on here that we did when we first tied that brush in so I'm gonna work that around as best I can and then you'll usually have some fibers right there I'm gonna pull them over the top of that wire and usually this works sometimes it doesn't every once in a while it will still cut that thread but we did good that time now I'm just gonna whip finish this off and we'll trim it to shape okay now again I'm gonna take my handy dandy brush I've swung my little catch basin around here and try not to catch your legs in there when you're brushing this and I'm just gonna kind of fluff this brush out to where it radiates out from the hook shank all the way around and you need to be careful when you get in here don't try not to brush your uh, crystal flash back into the fibers because we're going to do some trimming and we don't want to cut that off all right now I'm going to take my scissors and I recommend using tungsten scissors for this and I'm just going to pull down on the legs scoot right in here along the hook shank with my scissors just barely opened and I'm going to nip 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 right off the top all the way back don't want to grab a whole lot out on the side you just want to get it right off the top and then you'll see how much of that comes off of there now we're going to trim the top again a little bit but we just want to get that started and you can see I have just trimmed right along the center of the hook shank now I'm going to 
flop that around, drop those legs down through all the fibers, kind of brush everything out, make sure that the stuff right on top is radiating right out from the hook shank, clip right above the eyes, and then drop your scissors right down on top of the body and you can do that and not worry about cutting anything because that's a stainless steel wire that has uh, is the core of that brush so you're not going to cut it now I can see through there enough that I know I'm not going to cut my legs and that's something you always want to be conscious of don't cut your legs off because uh, if you do you're going to either end up with a uh, a fly that doesn't have as many legs as you want or you've got to just go back and start over now for trimming this what I've done just to keep them very similar is I've made a little pattern and you can see the shape of it and you see this little bump right here when I first started tying these I put the eye right out front but I didn't like the shape of the fly as much so now I just use that as a gauge and I put it so the eye of the hook sits right there and I hope that's lined up I can't really tell from this side but I want the eye of the hook lined up with that little notch in the front I'm gonna pull my legs up so they're out of the way and I'm gonna pull them back 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 lay that pattern on top and all I'm really worried about is getting the width to where I want it and then I'll make a little nip on the back corner being real careful again not to get my crystal flash and it's really hard to get all the way around this without contorting your arm out of socket so I don't really try to do all my trimming with the pattern but once I've done that you can see it's pretty much in the shape that I want it to be towards the end I just need to do a little trimming here and here on both sides and then trim up the corners and then we're going to flatten it off top and bottom so I just get in here and trim these edges and I'm pulling the fibers that are really long on the top up so they're even with that you can see here I'm just going to do this without getting my big mitts in the way and it's still looking a little bit rough now I'm going to come in here after I get that right there and you can see the shape that we're after it's just kind of a uh, a white oval just like you would uh, a small crab would look now you can see it's really tall here so I'm gonna come in here with my scissors laid right on top and just kind of clip all that stuff off of there all that tall stuff do that on this side so you're really going to trim away a lot of fibers and you're not going to end up with a whole lot and you don't want a whole lot if you've got too much this fly is going to be so dense that these 5 30 second eyes are not going to be enough to sink it it's going to be actually pretty pretty thin so um, trimming trimming right here and you can see it's kind of flat now one last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a half of a safety razor and I've just broken that in half and just be careful not to grab it the wrong way and you should be just fine always handle the back side of that blade I'm just gonna lay it down on there and give it just run it across there and any strays that are gonna stick out later on that will take care of them you want to kind of tilt your blade downward towards the fibers and just run it right across it 
with a kind of a sliding slicing motion. I'll do the same up here. See if I can do that that way. I'm going to pull all my crystal flash and tail out of the way. And you can see I'm not getting a whole lot, but I am getting those last few fibers that I didn't get with the scissors. And that's giving me a nice flat shape to that. And I'm going to come in here now that I've got everything flattened down the way I want and finish trimming the corners and get any long fibers out of the way. Just turn that around in your vise however you need to. Be careful not to cut your legs or your crystal flash or the tail. The tail's a lot easier to avoid than the other appendages, but you can still whack it if you don't if you're not careful. Alright, now this doesn't have to be perfectly shaped. Remember we're fishing. We're not trying to reinvent the crab itself. I'm going to let those hang down and then just trim them so that they're pretty darn long. I want the legs to end up being slightly longer than the tail of the fly. And that is a little ditty I like to call the EP Brush Crab. Very simple. Um, when you're not having to talk your way through it and just whip these out, you can do it in about 15 minutes per crab. They're extremely durable. You can catch dozens and dozens of fish on this because the core of that is a stainless steel wire. Uh, the tail, um, the original had craft fur, but I found that that was the most vulnerable part of the crab, and it would end up being chewed off. And then once that was chewed off, for some reason, the fish just didn't seem to be as interested in it. So try these things out. They sink really fast. They move along the bottom really well in a, a muddy flat. You can scrape that thing along the bottom with real short, sharp strips and cause it to have make little mud puffs on the bottom. And uh, give it a shot.